Hey, you guys wanna learn how to do some color grading? Yes? Well, you're in luck, because this video is about color grading. I'm about to teach you some really awesome tips and tricks and fundamentals and all the good things you need to know to get really cinematic, good looking color grades in your footage. Okay, let's get started. Not on the computer, follow me. Shot a video, right? You got a timeline. You have a whole bunch of little clips, and maybe it looks something like this, right? This is maybe a clip of a person, a house, in a car, and they're each different types of shots. There are two different stages. There's correction and there's grading, and they go hand in hand. Here's how you should think about organizing your stuff. Like whatever program you're in, it doesn't matter. They all generally offer the same flow. First things first is you want to think of your grade as being something that's going to be applied over the top, like a layer, over everything. At least for the scene that's going to have that grade applied. And then your correction will then be applied on a clip by clip level. So the way I like to work is I like to apply my grade first and then I go to a shot that's well exposed and kind of dial in my look and start scrubbing around and see how well that look is holding up to the other shots. Now if there's a shot that's a little too dark or a shot that has the wrong kind of tint, that's not a big deal. I just do my individual correction for that. And basically at the end of the day, I could wipe out my whole grade and my correction is still gonna basically leave all these shots balanced with each other, which is great. Cause then I can apply a whole new grade later on and it still works. It's still consistent across everything. So let me go show you guys how to do some actual cool grades. I just got a call from Derek and apparently Apparently his tire exploded on 4th Street. He's gonna send a pin right now and we're gonna go pick him up. Derek got off a decently hard exit in East LA. I don't think he knows where he is. The real reason why I wanted to go do this is so that I could joyride Sam's car. Don't tell him that. It's like a racing model. It's like super easy to drive this thing compared to my truck. Woo! This baby's ready to roll. Uh, ready to die. You ready to die? Good. When you work with Corridor Digital, you better be ready to die. So apparently we have some fans at LG because they actually sent us a 4K LG monitor. This is actually the UD88. I've never actually used a 4K monitor before. It's really nice, I'm not gonna lie. If you guys are looking for a nice monitor to color grade on, having worked with this monitor for the past week, it gets my endorsement. Here I have just a collection of random shots that we got with this little Blackmagic micro camera. The Blackmagic camera shoots a flat profile. A flat profile is often referred to as a logarithmic profile. It has to do with how the image is scaling the luma values from black to white. At the end of the day, here's all you really need to know. When you're shooting with a flat picture or a log picture, you're preserving as much of your dynamic range as possible because at the end of the day, if you're already shooting in that contrasty image, you can't go and fix things like underexposure or overexposure because all your shadows will have already been crushed down to black and there's no detail there to bring anything back in. That gives you the room later on to fix things, adjust things, manipulate things as you see fit. The downside is that your footage looks like junk when it comes out of the camera and that's where color grading comes in. All right, so let's make something that looks good, right? Let's take this really flat footage and make it look nice. So I like to start with a shot that has a human being in it. For example, here we have Sam. And one of the reasons I like to start with a shot with a human being is because we have skin tones. Skin tones are very important when you're color grading. No matter where you go with your footage, whether it goes cool or warm or really contrasty or whatever, at the end of the day, you want the skin to stay slightly reddish orange. And it doesn't matter what race you are, your skin is slightly reddish orange. Maybe brighter or darker, but all skins are the same hue across the board. Step one, we're going to add some contrast. A lot of programs have these things called color wheels. So they represent your lows, middles, and highs in terms of your brightness. So I'll take my lows and I'll pull those down a little bit. And I'll take my highs and I'll bump those up a little bit. You usually have something called a scope in your program. Uh, in this case, I'm looking at a waveform, which kind of shows me where my values sit. So I can see where my highs are and I can raise those up and down until, for example, they're touching the top of the graph, which means they're being blown out to white, or they can kind of sit a little bit below. Same thing with your lows. You can raise those up and down. You can see where they are. And generally speaking, the bottom of the graph is black. So once your values are hitting that, they're getting crushed to full black. And there's also a contrast dial. You can bump that up a little bit more. He has a, he has a silver BMW and he's stuck in a bad neighborhood in Boyle Heights. <laughs> Let's keep an eye out. <laughs> Apparently he's on fourth. When I talked to him on the phone, it sounded like he had gotten off and he was on the corner of fourth and pecan, but I couldn't hear him very clearly. And then, so I asked him to send me a pin he never did. I don't see him. I don't think so. Hey dude, where are you? I I'm on fourth. I'll meet you there. I'm in a I'm in Sam's blue car. I'm I'm on bye. Now, the other thing is if you're shooting with flat footage is it tends to be very desaturated. Desaturated means it doesn't have a lot of color in it. So we want to raise the amount of color in the footage. So I can turn on my saturation just a little bit here. 
Yeah, it's starting to look nice. It's a little warm. I could color correct the shot just a little bit by like tinting, for example, my whites towards blue just a little bit. There we go, looks a little bit more natural. Before, after, before, after. Now I'm in clip view in DaVinci, which will only apply a color grade to a specific clip. I'm actually gonna flip over to timeline view, which will apply it to everything. Now I can hop around and see how my grade looks in other shots. Well, the shot of Jake sitting at his desk, before, after, looks pretty good. Let's push it just a little bit further. I'm going to do a simple stylization first. Kind of a classic cinema look is to have slightly blue, cool shadows. So I'm gonna take my shadows, and I'm just gonna pull this down to kind of a blue direction. Okay, everything looks blue and kind of looks crappy. Now we're going to go in the opposite direction with our midtones. We're gonna to try to get those skin tones back to that orangish red hue. There we go. And now if I want to just think of my highlights, I can. Maybe make them a little bit cooler, make them a little warmer, I can make go green with them. It really comes down to the style of your scene. I'm just gonna go a little cool here. Now because both my shadows and my highlights are going cool, my skin is getting a little faded again. So I'm gonna push it even a little further towards orange. And now I have a little more of an interesting shot where there's a little bit more of like a color cast in my darks. Let's go even further. Let's get really extreme. It's important to know a little bit of your color theory as you work on this kind of stuff. If you look at these color wheels, they basically show you colors that are opposite each other. If you take those two colors and combine them, they cancel each other out. So that's why, for example, I'm taking my midtones and pushing them in the opposite direction of my shadows because they cancel each other out. And what you end up getting is you get really dark parts of the shadows where my midtones aren't touching or influencing. They stay kind of blue. The upper parts of my midtones where my shadows aren't really influencing things, those get a little more normal, a little more warm. In the middle where they meet, they're kind of transitioning through. That's where you get some interesting color gradients. That's how you can utilize these color wheels kind of inform yourself of what's happening. That's what learning a little bit of color theory will help you with. Pecan, yeah, it's right up here. So we must have passed him. I go, where are you? He goes, I'm on the corner. I go, the corner of what? He goes, uh, just on the corner, man. I'm in LA on a corner. All right, there he is. I see him. Derek! Hey. Hey, what's up, dude? I think that this is broken. I don't know if I can drive. You think that's legal to drive like that? Tape it. Well, you see what you got there is a classic blowout. When Walmart has a big sale, it happens when Derek gets off the freeway, and it happens when Kanye West spends uh, too long snorting cocaine at a strip club. Classic blowout. Either way, you end up on the side of a curb in the middle of Los Angeles. <sighs> well, thanks guys. Appreciate, welcome, it. Appreciate the pickup. My grade is on top of the whole thing. I'm just going through now shot by shot and correcting each shot to work under that grade. Brightness, the same color space, the same tonality. Evening out all my footage by having a grade over everything and then just doing my individual corrections. And now I can go back to my grade at the end of the day. Let's say I'm talking to my friend. He's like, dude, you should really think about making the shadows green, not blue. I'm like, oh, you're so right. I can just be like, whoop. And now all my shadows are green and it applies to the entire piece. And because everything's been corrected, together under that grade, everything still looks good. I don't have to go through shot by shot by shot and refix everything. Whether you're working in Premiere, you're working in DaVinci, you're working in anything else, the whole layer method of doing your correction shot by shot by shot, but then your grade over everything is a great way to organize things. I was working in DaVinci. DaVinci's free, straight up free, so you guys can download it and mess around with color grading in there. If you guys are using Premiere, you'll have access to Lumetri, and it's a quick and easy way to kind of replicate all the stuff. I hope you guys enjoyed the little color grade tutorial session. It's a very very deep world there of options and abilities. I mean, it's color. People have been working with colors for hundreds of years. There's no real right or wrong way to do it. There's just tips and techniques that look good that you can kind of think about. LG, thanks for the nice monitors. It makes my color grades look really good. <laughs>